dear friends welcome to this 39 episode of my career my idol we are familiar with pirates and sea fights it is common to our imagination in various ways there are also maritime business and trades we find naval sports and allied tourism activities there are also so much of marine activities known to us maritime industry is so wide and have so diversified diversified activities we have navy sea routes and travels naval guards goods movement at seas oil barges barges etc the merchant navy is a term used to refer to the commercial sector of the maritime industry the merchant navy has no involvement in military service but rather the shipping of cargo and people across sea routes aboard cargo ships tankers and cruise liners the maritime industry stands at the heart of global connections and economy as much of the world trade between nation is still carried out marine trade routes here youngsters have to look for the job opportunities in the maritime field dr benny parati vidu vidyalo youtube channel my career my identity series is looking into the various professional areas to help youngsters to find the proper skill set and academic directions so here we, we are looking for the skills and abilities of a seafarer it's not common for us and for many because many are not close to sea ship and not familiar with sea routes and travels so for many it is far from our daily life a person who is interested for marine related jobs need max science also athletic physique the strongest storms make the best sailors the strongest games make the best players tougher challenges make the best leaders india currently supplies around 12.8 percentage of officers and around 14.5 of ratings to the world seafaring community this is one of the highest of any country today we are understanding the scope and skill sets of the merchant navy and maritime industry positions aboard merchant ships can typically be broken down into four departments deck department navigation engineering department electro technical department and stewards department hospitality let's venture into this field study the qualities and challenges of a mariner happiness and dynamic leadership in this field william arthur ward has said the pessimist complains about the wind the optimist expects it to change and the realist adjust the sails ships travel all over the world there is heavy traffic in the sea there is huge marine tourism we are familiar with titanic we have heard of suez canal and panama canal also of the bermuda triangle there are challenges also the covid has made 
many sailors trapped at various international shores, even in the sea. George William Curtis has said, it is not the ship so much as the skillful sailing that assures the prosperous wake. So today, we entertain our minds and imagination with the world of ships, sea, travel, and merchant routes. And we have a passionate mariner to share his experiences with us and direct the youngsters. It is Mithun Simon, who has started his career as a seafarer at a very young age, that is immediately after his schooling. And he has enjoyed working in the field. He is now working with Anglo Eastern Ship Management. His promotion is due for the Chief Navigating Officer. Let's welcome Mithun and listen to his unique experiences in the sea. So now, over to you, Mithun. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Father, for those kind words. As I get to know that my young friends who are just past their 12 or like who is like looking for a good career want to know very much about Merchant Navy because this is a field which is not very common but yeah nowadays it's becoming common. So there are many things people like uh, myths like people think about but today I'll, I would like to with my this short uh, speak. I would like to clear all your doubts and everything. I'll first start with my introduction. Uh, myself, Midan Simon. I'm currently uh, sailing as a second navigating officer, due for promotion, a chief navigating officer, sailing with Anglo Eastern Ship Management for the past 12 years. I uh, did my schooling from Delhi, Mount St. Mary School, Delhi Camp, uh, followed by Father Agnew in 11 12. Soon after the uh, completion, my 12th, uh, like uh, all youngsters, I too was clueless where to do my, what to do next. So many things like engineering, uh, I'm talking about back 2009. So many things like engineering was a big boon there. So uh, then going for graduation, things like that, many things were there. But then I was very much interested in joining NDOs. And as well as Merchant Navy. Merchant Navy has always been a passionate ever since my childhood. That's one big reason is like uh, in my family, I have a marina, my cousin brother. So all since my childhood days, I have seen him as my child, uh, as my role model. Every time I went from vacations and everything, he used to have a good spended life. At a very young age, he started earning. Uh, he would will like go roam around many places. So that factor size me. And like I also wanted to become him like him. So I inculcated the my abilities, my uh, skills accordingly and I was always passionate to join the seas. So I used to have done a lot of research and like what all qualities I need to become a mariner, how tough I have to be everything I did and uh, after a good talk with my brother and everything, I finally decided to join the seas. But getting a selection was a next big thing. So like uh, all uh, youngsters at that after 12th, I give many entrance exams, AIEEE, your IIT, Kerala engineering. Uh, and like uh, then I give only uh, for Merchant Navy, I gave only uh, for one exam, that's IAM. I'll uh, brief you out about how the structure, how's the process later. So I gave that uh, exam. I got clear. Then they called me for an uh, uh, interview, GD. Then I had my interview. I got selected for my interview. Then I had my medicals. After clearing my medicals, I had my second uh, uh, written exam. Uh, that was a company sponsorship exam. Because once you clear your IMU exam, you have to get sponsored. If you get sponsored, 
you have your job like soon after you after your studies you have your job in hand if you're not a, if you're a non sponsored ca candidate then after like completion your uh, career shift you have to look for a company so it was like my like my brother got it it was always better to be sponsored candidate so i give my sponsorship uh, sponsorship exam then i got selected and i started my uh, training uh, at tulani maritime institute pune did one year of post c training like before uh, uh, first like a like a baby who has never seen the sea they give a one year training in, at shore base so i had my training in pune then for 18 months 18 months of that is not a career trip that is divided into 6 months each on different ships so 6 plus 6 plus 6 18 months of career trip in different ships i did my career trip after that we have to get the dg shipping exam to become a officer so for that another one year of uh, training as well as uh, exam it'll take so total to become a officer it is like any other professional four years it will take but the best part here is the time when you are uh, sailing as a cadet you get your stipend so that means at the age of 19 you earn something about uh, my at my time it was around 400 to 500 dollars so it was like uh, at that time 50 dollar rate was 52 so around 25 around 25000 rupees per month and that was a big thing for me because i got financially independent at the age of 19 from my parents so i was very happy about uh, that uh, that then second thing is to roam around the world i could roam around like visit many countries go ashore many things like that fantasize me very much so after becoming commission officer uh, that is commission officer is first <clears throat> i'll just show you see this is the hierarchy in merchant navy uh so okay, I'll, i'll first tell you there are two departments in merchant navy uh, major departments then there are subs one is the deck department this if you can see okay and then it's the engine department okay this uh, this is the officer level then there are two i'll tell you so this was my rank at that time deck cadet okay so after uh, completion my sea time as a deck cadet for 18 months we have to give a, an exam here in between a director general of shipping exam okay that comprises of around uh, six subjects and three orals oral uh, are like the difficult thing where you have to face a surveyor set of surveyors and they'll be asking you random questions about shipping I mean, about your subject are only but they can ask you in any twisted ways so you have to clear i mean uh, by chance uh, like out of three at, at one go if you don't get one oral you can attend an alternate month so it's like that approximately it takes uh because uh, it's a four month course plus exams so it will take near about 12 months in between to clear become a officer when you become a third officer you get a good handsome package of around starting of around 1.5 lakhs or in the usd i'll tell you it's minimum like 3000 to 3500 dollars okay so then from third officer to second officer you require 18 months c time okay after completion of 18 months you give the exam you become the second officer a second officer level you get pay of around 4500 usd okay then once you complete 18 to 30 months of sea time you have to give another uh like dgca exam for chief officer this land okay so uh, in the, here we will be having 12 written pre orals okay after once you clear uh, uh, like in between from here to here it may take you around 2 years because you can give in different like what well, suppose you go for your sailing for 6 months or 5 months come back in your vacation time you can give your exams then go for next sailing so it will take some time so once you be, uh, clear your exams then you are due for chief mate so uh, currently i have cleared my exam for chief officer and i am due for this promotion chief officer similarly after completion 18 months of sea time and giving uh, two exams 
be clear for the captain, which is also known as the captain is also known as master of the ship. Okay, I'll just uh, tell you the wages approximately. Here I told you as a second officer, you are given something around 4,500 to 5,000 USD. But see, the, the pay scale is little much different from companies to companies because some company give, uh, give you some benefits. So it's a rough guarantee. A chief officer level, you get something about 6,000 to 8,000 USD starting by uh, salary level per month. Uh, and at the rate of uh, master, you will be paid something between 8,000 USD to 12,000 USD. That becomes with your uh, experience and your skills, you will be paid 8,000 to 10,000 USD. So that comes up for the deck officers. Similarly, in the engine department, engine department, uh, there is a uh, first we have a, a student who comes out of the 12th, they have to do a marine engineering course, which is a four year course. The other alternative one, what one can have is like, we have to do a four year mechanical course, four year mechanical course, then followed by one year GME course, that is graduate marine engineering. That is a conversion of a mechanical engineering degree to a marine engineering degree. So once you do that, then you uh, give your company exam, you become an engine cadet. Then you have to sail for 12 months sea time. Like for here in deck cadet, you had to sail for 18 months sea time. Here, uh, everything we talk about in sea time. Sea time is the number of uh, time uh, spent at, uh, at sea on the particular rank. And you gain your sea experience, knowledge, your practical knowledge in sea. Okay, so uh, after completion of the, uh, your, uh, as an engine cadet for 12 months, you give your exam, that is general of shipping exam, then you become your junior engineer. After completion 12 months, you become, give exams, fourth engineer. It's the same thing, what I explained about in the deck, that same thing goes about in the engine department. Okay, now the one thing that is different between the deck department and the engine department is that, Engine de engineers, the, the highest level that an engine department engineer can go is a, to a chief engineer level. He can never go to a master level. But in the deck, it is only the captain who is made only from the deck department. It's basically like uh, the, the deck department is the operational department and engine department is the technical department. So always the head of the ship will be from the operation side. So that is from the deck side. Okay, similarly in ratings. Okay, I'll tell you what are ratings. Other than the officers, all the crew members that are on their own board, they are known as ratings. So ratings are basically the crew members. We have uh, many times in the deck side, we have bosun, we have pump men, we have able, able C body, that's ABs, you know. And it's not just one, maybe we have five ABs, uh, ordinary seamen, we have three, four ordinary seamen, pump men, we have two. So depending upon the, the size of the ship and the need of the person to maintain the ship, the crew members are increased. Okay. Similarly for catering, we have a, a chief cook, a general steward, then steward one, cook two, like that. That is for the catering department. Then in the engine department, there comes an electrical officer uh, and an electric uh, engine cadet. Okay. So to become an uh, ETO, that's electrical training officer, you have to be, uh, you have, must have done in diploma in electricals or uh, BE electricals. Okay, then you uh, apply at BG ship, shipping exam, you become an electrical cadet. Or once you get selected, you become an electrical cadet. Then after completion of 12 months of seat time, give the next exam, the highest you can go is an electrical engineer or electrical officer. To this level you can't go from here to here okay so basically uh, the catering department the highest you can go is a uh, uh, chief cook or catering officer and the electrical department you can go is a electrical engineer or electrical officer so now in the engine department the ratings there are many junior ratings there are many uh, greasers wipers there are many oilers so this these these all are comes under ratings but they they all are not just one 
one rank. They are many because depending about the ship's maintenance, how many you need them. There are many of them. Okay. So that comes about the hierarchy of the ship. So yeah, coming back to uh, my sea experience. So till now I have completed my twelve years in shipping, and it is a like shipping industry is a big industry. It's it's just not the ships that are there are opportunities just not on the ships. At the port also there are various opportunities. Suppose I want to stop my sailing. I I, like, I want to stop going sea because. Uh, like uh, due to any reasons, maybe due to family constraints or anything, I can switch over to port. Like the nearest port, I or uh, like uh, as a port manager or port operation, any many things of the so port operation is also a big industry in the shipping. Just not the ship, but the port management. Okay. Similarly, when uh, it's for the engineers, suppose any engineer want to leave shipping, so they they have a huge uh, because since they have a uh, engineering degree, they have a huge sector to join shore. Okay, uh, like any uh, factories, any industrial, uh, where mechanical, basically where mechanical, any turbines, many things they have good opportunity. So it's not just the high seas. Like once, if you want to leave shipping, I mean, I mean not shipping, just sailing. You have a majority of the other other options which are left uh, later in life. Okay. So, yeah, so that's all till now. Father, uh, you can proceed. Anything, other, yeah. any other questions you have? Father? Okay, okay. Now we will, uh, we will ask questions so that you can share your exact experiences uh, in, in the job and out. Okay. okay. Now, uh, yeah, the, the participant friends, you can, you can start your questions. Uh, good evening. Uh, I am Elvis. So I had a question regarding this. Uh, sir, how do we identify our interest for the marine jobs and how do we develop them? Okay. First and foremost, how do you identify your interest? That depends upon your knowledge for the, this, uh, like how well you know, know about shipping, how interested you are or eager to your joining to shipping. Or uh, what all you know, the good things about shipping, of course, and they good. They have the bad also. So, if you have like any job, if you have the fondness for it, you look look into it. Then you start building up your interest with it. Okay. Since I uh, like I, I explained, since my childhood I had interest for this, so I inculcated my interest towards the subjects. Like my brother used to say, like physics and maths. There are two subjects which is very strong. One has to be a little on the upper hand to join the seas as an officer. So I always inculcated my interest towards the subject. Because calculation, there's lots of calculations you will have to be doing. So maths and physics are one, two subjects. That's very much. Then about your physical phys physics and your fitness. See, uh, since childhood, I used to play badminton. Uh, till six, seventh, I was a Taekwondo player. After that, I was moved into badminton. I was never a national player or state player, but at school levels, many. I was good enough into athletics because I believe it's not just not studies that would make the person tough or like many things, sports, co-curricular activities, which inculcates a person or build a personality. Okay. Just having some bookish knowledge on that doesn't make a, a growth in a person. So it's studies as well as your physical fitness. Uh, physical fitness uh, game, playing various games, having that team spirit, having face lo losses, uh, gathering oneself, being tough for the next, all this can make you preparedness, okay, for the next level. So, Elvis, is my answer clear? Yes, sir, it is. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Hello, sir. Yeah, the next person can ask question. Hello, uh, good evening. Uh, my good name evening. is Sahi. And uh, my question was uh, that, uh, what are the essential qualities for applying maritime training courses? And also, which are the best institutes for studying? Okay, for applying into maritime courses. See, I told you, basically, 
to join machinery uh, we need science okay science is very much required uh, uh, pcm 60% is a minimum okay and english should have minimum 12 55% that is a minimum but the main thing is you have to clear the inu exam in the, uh, indian maritime university the we have the cet common entrance test you have to clear that that is the big thing okay. if you once you clear that then you look for sponsorship okay so pcm that is the one of the uh, science is very much required to become an officer but that don't do sir suppose you, if you don't have a science there is an option b also join as a rating okay there is a growth from the rating also uh, a non uh, like commerce background or a uh, non science background they can join apply because to join a rating they just need 12th qualification and uh, i think it's 50% in 12th commerce so you join as a rating once you attain 36 months of sea time as a rating okay you can give exams currently these exams are not conducted in india from rating to officer these exams are conducted in uk or uh, new zealand singapore these places from rating to officer uh, because the, the what we get is a license so you uh, uh, after working as a rating for 36 months you can apply for uh, you can be, once you get into the industry you don't need to be you already you get to know the knowledge automatically so if you don't have a science background you can join as rating by same giving the exam uh, i you rating exam then uh, do your c time for 36 months then give an exam but currently we don't have in india it's there in singapore uh, new zealand and united uk so that's a, basically we need science in india to give get the license and indian license you must have a uh, science in india, science that one okay thank you then uh, what, what is your happiness and enjoyment in 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 this jo job my happiness and enjoyment okay uh father fr frankly my happiness is like i was a travel freak since childhood i loved traveling okay visiting new places visiting different countries meeting new people then of course the money at a very young age i become financially independent at the age of 19 uh, a person who have earns something uh, he who becomes financially independent that was my that was a pr proud moment for me that was a moment of happiness since because of this field and today like with all god grace i'm i'm happy in my field with the uh, perks that i'm getting and continue my visiting um, worldwide till now i've uh, visited around 27 countries so <laughs> that makes me happy that's me really proud okay thank you thank you so uh, i had another question there are cargo ships tankers cruise liner different kinds of sea related jobs navy tourism merchant sea travel submarine and travel movement can you explain the different areas and multiple sub divisions in the maritime industry okay see merchant navy is something very much commercial okay so commercial means we trade cargo and by trading is what we uh, like shipping runs from your like the pins safety pins to big big drones or whatever like engines it's all from one country to another it's all shipped okay so if shipping stops the world is stopped okay so there are many different different types of cargo ships only there are bulk carriers there are oil tankers there are chemical tankers there are gas tankers there are container ships there are ferries there are passenger ships there are row row ships Okay, I'll, I'll just briefly explain what all these bulk carriers are ships which carry things in bulk. Okay, like carrying coal, carrying rice, carrying sugar, carrying bauxite, carrying iron ore in bulk. Okay, they are bulk carriers. Okay, now we come to oil tankers. Oil tankers are ships which carry oil in bulk, like crude oil. Okay, naphtha. Okay, uh, diesel oil which carry oil in bulk. Chemical tankers. 
benzene, your sulfides, and the all chemicals which are for various purposes from one country to another, they are carried in bulk. Then your gas tankers, LPG, LNG, all these are carried from one country to another in bulk. So they are specialized, they are like pressurized tanks inside the ship and we are used to carry them. Okay, now the other ships is ro uh, Roro ships. Roro ships are known as roll on, roll off. So they are ships which carry your, all your expensive cars from one country to another. They are just like uh, Rolls Royce, Hyundai. The only sh carry ship, uh, ships which carry cars, trucks, or vehicles. Okay, they are known as Roro ships. Then passengers. Passengers, of course, we all know, which carry like cruise liners, human for uh, tourism, for leisure. Okay, so there are different types of ships. All this combined under merchant union, different uh, ty types of ships. I uh, like I've done basically uh, five types of ship, but uh, currently I'm like uh, more into uh, bulk carrying. So yeah, one more uh, ship I forgot, that is container ships. You must have seen ships that filled with small, small containers. Container, container ships are those ships which carry cargo in package form. Suppose a person or a shipper, uh, like for example, in India, one person wants to buy uh, many clothes or something from China. What he does, he do, does a consignment of from China. So from China, all the cargo is come into in a, in a container through a ship. So he books a container and that container comes by ship. So person who, who can't afford the full ship, but have to send the cargo, they are sent in small, small containers. So so the ships which carry containers are you know, container ships. So uh, is my answer clear? Yes, sir. It is clear. Thank you. Uh, so my next question was, uh, so which are the challenging skills which is required for this field? Okay. Challenging skills. Challenging skills is like one has to be physically and mentally tough. One has to be self-motivating because the sea is not always smooth. Okay, what we see, the sea is not always smooth wave, wavelets. Okay, it becomes harsh. But that harshness can last for one hour, two hours, one day, one week. Like there are something around uh, four to five instances in my life where I have not slept for a week because we have like experienced a uh, tropical rain, a, a TRS or a hurricane, in your simple words, a rough sea. At rough sea, it's like very difficult to like, to frankly think stand, it's very difficult to do our duties because the ship is always rolling, pitching. So what happens? It's become, it become, becomes very difficult to like, we lose our motivation. Like when will this end? So one has to keep self-motivating. Okay, this too shall pass. Okay, it will be hardly a few more hours. We have to motivate ourselves. It becomes really challenging, such things. Okay, because see, the weather is something which is really not better. Okay, we have, we do weather routing, many things, but many things are in our hand. We do. Uh, we can avoid and roads, do longer roads, but still, many things we have to take in strong winds. So that is one challenging thing. Then other thing, you stay away from your family because this is this is one job where you have to sacrifice your family. Okay, you when you are on vacation, you have a good, nice vacation, but the time when you are out at sea. You miss your family, like four men. Four. Being officer, like uh, right now, I'm. I have four months. So, but cadet ship, I used to have six months. So, six months away from the family, it's a big thing. So, one has to be mentally strong to face all those emotions. So, these are the challenges I have faced out, out at sea. Okay, you were talking about these challenges. Uh, can you just mean, did you have any experiences, this risky high seas or pirates also, uh, usually in the sea? So did you have such an experience and what was your reactions or those things? 
absolutely father uh, i had a very bad experience like once in my life uh, that was back in 2012 i had just joined my series i was doing my uh, in my cadet ship i was cadet like cadet so uh, it was like uh, so a deck cadet his duty is to assist the officer okay uh, so it was one of my watches i'm navigating up the chief officer we were transiting from uh, actually uh, i was in a oil tanker so uh, we were uh, doing a run from kochi to the gulf libya so we were, had to go past the gulf of aden area so it was a uh, early week uh, week uh, twilight time so uh, I, i was with my chief, chief officer i mean we were very much prepared for like high risk areas and everything we had uh commandos on board things like that but all practic- practical mock drills and everything we had done we had rigged uh, barbed wire cctvs everything we we had taken all precautions but an attack that was really unpredictable it started something morning early morning twilight time around 4 o'clock i saw a small blip on my uh, radar we have a radar i saw a small, saw a small blip on my radar and i was just monitoring we had we had to keep monitoring Uh, so there were ships we follow a convoy in, in a high risk area a ship generally no ships transit alone we follow a convoy if you people have must have seen the uh, philip uh, captain philip movie you must be knowing what's convoy convoys are basically like in the high risk area it's uh, like ships run parallel to each other and there is one naval ship which guards it suppose there are five ships this side five ships this side there's one naval ship which is in the forward under whose care we all ships transit that day so my ship was on the left side extreme end so i saw a, a small blip a small spot on my radar and the, the, that was a small boat we started uh, like monitoring it so the speed of the boat just moves on and it was approaching us so that alarmed my chief officer i was assisting him to i just uh, alarmed him also so we we got little alerted uh my jos is called up my captain but that is when first time in like i i was i was just like hardly uh, 10 months experience i still I was little panicked i saw so much motivation so much composed my captain was he saw the situation is going to be bad but he was so pious he just okay uh, take the hand on the wheel he just said like just started cycling the ship cycling the ship means just uh, running the ship zigzag so that the wakes the pirate boat just deviates then very like he was never pa- i what is said like when in a hard situation one be biased he can think like very easily and handle the situation to the proving so he just called the vts or other ships in this case alerted the convoy the naval ship we called our commandos we saw, i saw life firing in front of me at morning 5 o'clock around 4:35 first we were just like trying to cycle around but they were coming close so we called the commandos uh, there was life firing then uh, soon this uh, naval ships approached us and just before they were boarded this naval ship caught caught them and we were safe so that was a big like one of the irish area one attack that i have seen myself and it's but nowadays the it has been, like industry has gradually picked up so uh, pirates and all have come down much very much better thank you so uh, i had a question there are many youngsters who are interested to work with the characteristics and the skills of the physique their thinking interests and activities all are in line with the field how much do the marine jobs relate to the sportsman spirit and the qualities of physique of a person see uh like uh, like i earlier mentioned machinery is not just about study it's not just about sports it's a mixture of both okay if you are sportsman you can't be much in the officer if you are a, a studious academic guy you can't be much in it's a mix of both okay so it's just not the physique it's physique plus your academics that makes it both because out at sea you have to be physically strong mentally strong 
okay you have to be quick in your actions your reactive like all responses should be very quick okay then um, like being athletic being a sport person of, of course that brings you the yeah, that already the qualities endeavor in you so here in merchant navy it's just not the sportsman spirit it's sportsman spirit plus your iq plus your studies because here we have uh, the exams we have a psychometric test before joining gym psychometric test is like which shows your mental ability how well you respond to your uh, emergencies how well you uh, can take uh, take care of any situation so that 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 really plays a big role out at sea you're all because shipping is like at out at when I, when we are on ship we are out at sea all emergencies can happen any time a collision a fire a oil pollution a security a security uh, incident a flooding and one has to respond to any of this emergency situation very quickly suppose it let it be like uh, i'm i'm uh, sleeping at night time or in time and any at any time ship is ship never st- like stops it continuously runs so emergencies can happen any time it's just with one ring we have to be alert we have to be quick they should they, if like a single second lost is a a single second lost in rescuing the person or the rescuing the emergency so effectiveness with come with preparedness one has to be very fast as well as alert vigilant uh, so sir so my next question is uh, covid has trapped many a deficiencies so ships have not been showed so what is the gravity of this covid and will it make the job less interested and insecure see due to this covid yeah we all know many of our friends many jobs many have lost but yes it has really affected shipping also like last time before i joining we uh, i had to be quarantined uh, and during my sign off time reliever has my reliever was planned to leave me uh, like he had to uh, undergo tests many time he had to be quarantined for the days i mean this the sign on sign off like it has been delayed by a lot there are maybe many seamen uh, seafarers who are been stranded because there is no reliever plan because there was no flight operations okay then then each country has their own regulations for crew exchange to change the crew they have their own regulation some say they have to do quarantine for 14 days some say one month so it's all company has challenges like one month to uh, keep so many crew, so many crew members at the hotel to for the food so, so uh, like company think, okay let's go once the ship moves out of that country at the next port but maybe then that port that port there will the regulations may be different so like that many situations have been there in the recent past two years of, like the shipping we have experienced but yes that depends about company to company how much uh, big your companies and how much willing your companies to uh, pay for the sign on sign off it's a very uh, uh, like uh, not a general thing Uh, if it's a good company yes of course sign on sign off they have to do it at any cost so they don't uh, sacrifice on the, the amount of but uh, you must have all read in the newspaper and all like india uh, at one of many many ships the indian seafarers were on the ships at the cochin uh, and all uh, they charged huge for joining the ship but that's really sad that's really sad like people taking disadvantages of the because of the covid protocol and everything but generally yes of course this is it has affected our shipping industry a bit but i think that will be taken care of by the company okay uh, there are uh, very famous canals and marvelous creations like suez canal panama canal and kl canal uh, so can you elaborate on them and uh, did you travel through those routes suez panama and kl uh, also can you, you just speak about bermuda, bermuda triangle which is uh, considered as double triangle so uh, please please share your experiences with those things 
Sure, father. Uh, yeah, there has been uh, various canals. Swiss canal, yes, I've traveled. Swiss canal, Panama canal, I've traveled. Kiel canal, I've traveled. See, Swiss canal is like a canal, a man-made canal that has been uh, made between the uh, Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. It separates uh, Asia from Africa. So it's a man-made canal. Shipping, for ships which has go to, suppose from India or any part of Asia, ship has gone to Europe. This Swiss canal has like cut, made so much uh, shortcut that, than to go by Cape of Good Hope and traveling all around. This has been a, one of the busiest canals. You must have all have read the recent Evergreen. One ship got stuck uh, in the Swiss Canal and it really shocked the world. Okay, because Swiss Canal is one of the busiest canals. A, a, suppose a ship is stuck because the width of the canal is just that it, uh, uh, it's approximately 95 meters. A ship with a breadth of maximum 75 meters can pass through. That is the allowance. Swiss Max ships, they are known as. Okay. No big ships can't pass. So this the Swiss canal has its own width as well as depth restrictions. Width is something about 95 meters. Depth is something about 20.5. If I'm not 20.5 meters, that's depth. So larger ships can't go through this. But smaller ships definitely can go, and it has shortened the route. So it is one of the busiest canals. There are basically four locks. Locks are like one ship come in. You have you lock it and two-way passage, okay, coming and going. So the entrance is, uh, is from the port side and exit is from the Swiss port. I've been to Swiss Canal, then come to the Panama Canal. Panama Canal is like connecting North America with the South America. Uh, it is a bigger canal than the Swiss Canal. Okay, not with the width, but the traffic density. Traffic density because Panama Canal, uh, cut shorts a huge amount of traveling. Suppose any person from the North America want to go uh, go to uh, like China. Through the Panama, Panama Canal, it shortens the route. One has to just go the opposite globe across the world and reach. But if one had to come through the Cape of it would have a huge uh, traveling. So these canals are of course man-made to shorten the routes and everything. And like uh, then Kiel Canal, which is a German canal. Okay, it's a small, it's a small canal, but full. Uh, it's part of the. Big, it is known as the busiest canal in the world. Okay, because, because it's only for sh small ships, but busiest canal. So my experience, uh, all these canals have locks, locks and gates. So once uh, before for transiting in these canals, special pilots come on board, train their own pilots. They navigate the ship. We are just observers. I mean, we just overlook like they doing the things correctly. So that is how the Panama, uh, Panama Canal, Suez Canal, and Tay Canal works. And uh, like once a ship getting stuck in any of this canal, it will stop the world. <laughs> we must have the biggest example is Evergreen. We all must have highlighted very recently. So what about Bermuda Triangle? Yeah, Bermuda Triangle. Bermuda Triangle, you must uh, you must have all heard about it. It's a it's a myth. It's a it's a unproven fact. It's a triangle which joins Miami, Bermuda, and Puerto Rico, and which forms a triangle like or it's sometimes commonly known as the Devil's Triangle. Many ships, many airlines, which has passed through them before, long before, have just been locked. They have not ever found any trails, any debris, nothing were found. So there were many research carried out, many things. It's still a myth, which we shipping, we generally uh, uh, don't pass through that area. We avoid it. So there have been many, many reasons, like they say in that area, some old platypus used to live, which have died. And once they died, the methane has come up. So anyone who passes out that we inject, uh, like, inhale that methane gas and we die on. So then some say that magnetic flux is very deep. So once we enter this triangle, the our, because all ships and aircrafts run on magnetic compass, the compass start ref reflecting. We all uh, like 
navigate our ship with the help of compass. Like we have to go zero four zero this course. So we so if the compass def deflects, we do we we lose we lose our way. So because of the magnetic flux in this area, the compass start deflecting. So the people lose track. It's it's still today. It's a unproven myth. What is the exact reason why? What is there? There are like monsters there. Is so it's in general we nowadays we don't avoid, we avoid this Bermuda Triangle if possible. That is one. Both ships, uh, ships and airlines, because there have been many scientific tests which have carried out on it. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, you are working with the Anglo Indian Ship Management Company, Anglo Eastern. Sorry, this company is the largest ship manager in the world as of November two thousand eighteen. It employs more than 27,000 or uh, 27,000 seafarers from multiple countries. How do you, how did you get into this prestigious company? Could you please share your experience on your growth story? Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm currently working with Anglo Eastern Ship Management. Yes, uh, they have near about a thousand ships, something around 900 ships they have. It is like one of the world's largest shipping company. And uh, moreover, it is the uh, like for, uh, world's largest shipping company employing Indian seafarers. It's a Hong Kong based company, but they have more Indian officers and Indian crews, crew members. So uh, to get into such a company, they, uh, they, have, they conduct a company sponsorship exam. Okay, they conduct a sponsorship exam. Like I mentioned before, I had my elder brother who was working with this company. So he asked me to give their sponsorship exam. I gave their exam. So uh, like uh, you cannot search in the, in the official site, Anglo Eastern uh, Maritime Academy. They have their uh, sponsorship exam uh, dates and when they are conducted. Yearly they conduct twice. One in the month of uh, April, May, other in the month of November, December. So uh, just uh, check online and you uh, uh, like, Give their sponsorship exam, clear the interview, clear the medicals, then you can get into administration. Like there, there are many other uh, companies also, fleet management, MSC shipping, MERS shipping, like many shipping like companies are there. They all uh, good companies conduct their own exams. We we'll get the sponsorship and then get into the company. Uh, so sea travel, ship and marine business activities, etc. are not very, actually not very common to the general public. So can you just share the importance of these uh, ship related travel, movement of goods, etc. Okay, uh, okay, sea travel. See, uh, like I explained a little back, uh, at sea we track from small pin to big, big locomotives, engines, we we can okay so they are like they are carried upon the grade of the cargo all different types of cargo everything uh, we carry so how it is different from because this is totally commercial the shipping industry is fully commercial okay it all depends on the cargo what you're carrying though uh, when in time of war we are second to the line for navy but shipping is fully commercial so it is the cargo that we get the trade upon. So different types of cargo, different type of trade we get it. Uh, so that categorizes different types of ships, like I mentioned, bulk carrier, container, uh, your oil tanker, uh, crude oil tanker, gas carrier, passengers, etc. everything. Uh, okay, now um, what do, I mean, how your teamwork in, in the ship, because there is an organizational structure you have already explained in the beginning, but still uh, how how uh, collaborate you, how friendly yeah. you are in the team, that, that team spirit in the ship. I'll, I'll absolutely explain further. See, hierarchy is something that is very much there in this industry. See, uh, like uh, here I mentioned the hierarchy each rank has their own responsibilities and duties. And we have to report report to our seniors. Like here, this ordinary seaman, deck department, he is, he is the junior most rating out here. 
he has to like uh, the jobs assigned to him is by the able seaman okay able seaman has his own job plus what's ordinary seaman and he has to report to the bosun so hierarchy is something that is very much followed in this industry suppose in the uh, uh, on ship the various sectors like uh, medical uh, then your uh, stationery cabin everything comes under the second officer all your life saving all your equipments your equipments all come under third officer but uh, we take these officers take care but they are report to chief officer like anything any mis happening happens any damage happens so hierarchy is something that is very much within the uh, like in our field but together we work as a team everything master captain he is the overall in charge of everything so suppose uh, third officer's one equipment field uh, some damage or some anything it is it is his duty to report to chief officer chief officer has to report it to master captain that so and so thing had then we have to rectify it as soon as possible with the help of our crew members having the spares so it is a group of teamwork which which comes in any any damages any emergencies okay for a simple example a uh, suppose one person fell overboard a man overboard in water it's an emergency okay that doesn't mean okay any any person who is seeing it you know it's a team effort he has to alarm it everybody comes uh, musters quickly raise we have a small lifeboat on board we have to lower it like we have the respective duties who is in charge of lifeboat they get in get into the water rescue him so it's full any emergencies and everything is a full team work and one has to do it with quick quickness and effectiveness so team team work very much plays in our industry because we all live as one team in on like a 300 meter long piece of ice so if team work cooperation understanding self motivation motivate each other is not there we can't survive we have to survive each other for like good 4 to 6 months so that is one big we all need in this specific uh, how long one travel will take uh, single travel how long how many days and what is your routine uh, within the ship okay uh father it depends upon from which voyage what voyage you get suppose for example i get a voyage from uh brazil to china okay i'll be carrying iron ore from uh, brazil and discharging it to china so i'll be loading at brazil for another suppose 2 to 3 days i'll navigating while the uh, uh, africa uh, cape of good hope to all the way to uh, like below the india uh, uh, sri lanka singapore strait going to china it generally takes a ship uh, has an average speed of around 14 to 15 knots okay which is around in kilometers approximately 25 to 28 km per hour in kilometer the, in shipping we say it's knots nautical miles so that is 14 to 15 and it is approximately 1.9 so double almost the double km per hour so uh, approximately that speed we travel so it's approximately 42 to 45 days from brazil to china but if my voyage is from uh say uh, our usa to brazil it's hardly uh, 11 days because the distance is it's depend upon how much mile you have to travel divide by your speed of the ship from india to gulf it's like something about 1200 divide by the, the your ship speed so that depends on the voyage where from where you are traveling from which loading port to discharge port what is it and my routine on ship okay uh, as i was a second officer okay i'll tell you the structures uh, a ship three people navigate the ship third officer like i mentioned here third officer second officer chief officer these are the three people who navigate the ship third officer have have his duties from morning 8 to 12 and night 8 to 12 okay so he does four hour watch and then eight hour off okay morning 8 to 12 night 8 to 12 second officer uh, navigate the ship from 12 to 4 that means noon 12 to 4 at midnight to morning 12 to 4 chief officer navigate the ship from 4 to 
that is from evening 4 to 8 and morning 4 to 8 these are the three so it's like four on eight off these are the three and uh, then other uh, time we do our own responsibilities and our own departmental duties which are we are responsible for so only these three people navigate the ship captain is the overall head he doesn't navigate in case of any emergency or anything when approaching a port or anything he comes okay. otherwise it is just this these three people who navigate the ship so my routine i was since i was a second officer my routine was like uh mid midnight 12 o'clock i used to i mean 11:30 wake up by 11:45 get ready and be on bridge bridge is where we navigate the ship uh, 11:50 get my eyes set because it's all uh, dark outside so i get my eyes set i set for the situation wrap the situation 12 o'clock i take out my watch 12 to 4 i navigate navigate the ship at 4 o'clock chief officer comes so i relieve what all the situation my situation navigation all hand over uh, by 4:30 i come to my cabin have my little small breakfast or anything sandwiches something like that i go, go for my sleep around 5 o'clock i wake up around around 11 o'clock by the noon uh, morning 11 o'clock have my lunch by 11:30 and 12 o'clock again i go for my uh, watch 12 to 4 and i navigate my ship that means noon 12 to evening 4 o'clock i navigate my ship then 4 4:15 i relieve have my uh, evening games or gym something gym session that's like we have on board uh, badminton pt small games i mean and then gymming session treadmills workout session or all do, do that then we have some uh, like uh, common tv area where we have like uh, before the dinner we just sit in for some chit chat then by 6 6:30 have my dinner 6 6 30 yeah we have and, uh, on board we have uh, meals a little before in time like breakfast we have 7 to uh, 6 30 to 7 30 we have a breakfast lunch is from like 11 30 to 12 30 and dinner is from 6 to 7 so it's like we have the uh, food time is a little before well before uh, so have my dinner by 7 then i do my, some watch some movies or have some Uh, uh give my call to my family and everything by uh, 8 8:30 i sleep and i 11:30 i wake up so that is my on board schedule anyway it is it is great to listen to your experiences because uh, it is truly wonderful and uh, surely this uh, this is uncommon to the general public that the complete area though Uh, the most of the uh, materials uh, goods movement is done by ships and uh, also there I, i don't think in india there is so much of travel and tourism related to ships but in europe mediterranean and all there is there is huge very much, uh, very much uh, travel and tourism uh, especially on on ships um, you you explained all the so called so called dynamism and the navigating responsibilities uh, and you are growing that, that that is the happiness because uh, from the age of 19 you started uh, 12 uh, more than 12 years now uh, in, in in this industry and you are preparing for uh, already due for the officer uh, chief officer level and again to the captain uh, all the all the success and uh you know all the areas because you are navigating the ship so you should be knowing and uh, and those all experiences your knowledge is uh, wonderfully good for the youngsters because these things are not uh, usually available uh, to our vicinity and to our close uh, circuits and but you have explained everything surely it is so useful for our youngsters so anyway thanks for uh, sharing all all these valuable experiences and from that first hand navigating uh, experience uh, the real challenges the routine responsibilities the organizational structure rules and the uh, different challenges high risk uh, high sea and all uh, th- thanks a lot now uh, our uh, our participant elvis will be just giving a short word of thanks and we will be concluding uh, so thank you mithun simon sir for sparing out time from your busy schedule enlightening us with the immense knowledge in the field of merchant navy 
i'm sure many would have been inspired to join the marines and the fields related to it thank you sir for explaining each and every position of the marines industry in so much detail thank you welcome i hope okay. some new yeah. marine marines come out from my today's speech i'll be very happy <laughs> some youngsters join usually because this this series now it is 39th in 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 this series my career my identity yeah, many watch that they are regularly and also this is surely for specific youngsters because those who are interested okay. for these kinds of areas for them uh, all the details are here uh, companies academy courses challenges and everything so thanks a lot uh, oh, thank you thank you so much father if anyone needs any special uh, personal guidance you can just give me my, my number father like if anyone approaches to you father uh, okay. thank you so much so okay all the best prayers and thanks